Hey everyone, Pat here at the Qit Lightboard, and today I want to talk a little bit about the basic challenge that Qit solves, and also a little bit about how our solution works. So, let me start by just drawing a graph over here, where we're going to have the number of users in your system on the y-axis, and then time on the x-axis. Now, the basic challenge that all of us solve is that every system we have has a capacity. Right? So no matter how big or small we are, there's a threshold that we hit in which your system starts to break down or it starts to fail, and it creates a really bad user experience. And what we see here very frequently at Qit is that we have things like government registrations, uh, ticket on sales, uh, hype product launches, things that drive a whole lot of traffic in a very short amount of time to your site, and it really quickly exceeds this capacity, and as soon as you get up here, you start to have a bad site experience and really bad user experience and, uh, and it causes a big business challenge for you. And so, of course, the first thing that we always have a discussion about in this scenario is why can't we just raise capacity a little bit? And we've seen uh, a lot of challenges to doing that. So the first thing is that if you have database calls or if you have any really resource intensive features, a lot of times it can be really challenging to scale those and have them still work effectively. The other thing is that if you do get them to scale, it can be extremely expensive or resource intensive, which causes some challenges of whether or not you have a business case to actually raise the capacity for a short period of time. And then the other thing we often see too is that we have third-party systems that get integrated into people's infrastructures, and sometimes you don't even actually have control over how those get scaled. And all of these create bottlenecks in your system, which is actually where Qit comes in. So, when people are on your website, what we can do is use a 302 redirect here that moves people over into the Qit infrastructure. Now here you'll be in a virtual waiting room and users will have uh, uh, a custom themed waiting room in which they can have the amount of uh, time that they have before they move back into your infrastructure, the number of people that are in front of them, communication to them, and then once it's their turn they'll move back in a first in first out order from when they went into the infrastructure. This time They'll have a token that will allow them to continue to browse your site as they expected prior to coming into Qit's infrastructure. So that's how we handle the problem to make sure that your site doesn't crash. Now, of course, there is uh, a number of different ways that you can configure and trigger the system. So let's talk a little bit about that as well. The first main configuration is what we would call 24-7 protection. So in that scenario, Qit is constantly running in the background of your website or your application. And from when you start it into the future, You'll always have people, when you start to reach this capacity threshold, you can trigger and move people into the Qt infrastructure, and they'll come in and back into your site in a first-in, first-out order, and it will protect your website from crashing and reaching this capacity, and you can constantly function underneath this and make sure that you don't crash. The second way that we often see uh, people need to use us is for timed events. So in that scenario, such as product launches, ticket on sales, when you have a very specific time that you know there's going to be an influx of traffic to your site, what we'll do is an hour or two before your event, we'll start something called a pre-queue, and we'll start gathering people into the pre-queue. No one has a place in line yet. At the moment your event starts, what will happen is everyone will get randomized, and then you'll have people given an order in line, and then they'll move back into your infrastructure in a first in, first out order. And then anyone that joins the queue after will be put at the end of the queue again and move in in a first in, first out order. So those are the two main configurations. And then we also have a lot of different ways to trigger or which pieces of your website you want to actually protect. Now, we have request URLs and request bodies that you can use to trigger. Uh, and then there's also HTTP headers, user agents, JavaScript, cookies. We have a lot of different ways that you can trigger which pieces of your site you want to protect. And depending on how your business case is. Some people really like needing just to protect their entire website infrastructure, right? which is important if you have unpredictable events and you just want to make sure that you're completely protected across the board. We oftentimes see people want to protect dynamic requests, so things like add to cart functions, very specific products on your site that you know a lot of people are coming after, but you want everyone else on your site to function as normal. And then the last thing is protecting the flow into third-party applications. So. Payment gateways is the main one that we see here, but there's tons of third-party applications that can cause bottlenecks in your user journey. So this allows you to protect that and, and give a good user experience while allowing the rest of your site uh, uh, experience to be as normal. So in summary, 
Qubit solves this capacity problem by using a 302 redirect to move people onto Qubit's infrastructure and protect your site, and then move people back in a first-in, first-out order. And we have different configurations and actions and triggers that allow you to protect specifically what you want, as well as use a, the configuration that fits best with your business case. So, I hope that was a good overview of how Qubit works. If you want more information, check out Qubit.com. And thanks for listening, and have a great day.